snap shackles. What are they? Why do we use them in carriage driving? What's a good snap shackle? What's a bad snap shackle? And I don't know, any other questions about snap shackles? Well, I'm gonna share my thoughts on snap shackles with you in just a moment. First, let me introduce myself. My name's Annie Marcou. I'm a professional horse trainer in the sport of carriage driving. I live in New England, in Massachusetts. Uh, if you're joining me for the first time, please drop a note in the comment section. Let me know where you're joining from. It's always a lot of fun to see how far we're reaching out to each other. I know that we normally get a lot of people throughout the United States, but also some people from Australia and the UK. So. Drop me a note, let me know where you're joining me from. Uh, I share my experience as a horse trainer on my website, coachmansdelight.com, through blog posts and articles and downloadable lesson plans, and most importantly, uh, online classes. Sort of like this one, but much more detailed and deep dives into specific subjects on carriage driving, training, competing, all of those great things. All right, so if you've joined one of those classes, let me know down in the comment section what your favorite class was. But let's get into this little talk about snap shackles. This came up because I was doing a question and answer session last week and we started talking a little bit about snap shackles, but we didn't get too terribly deep into it. And so I got a few follow-up questions asking for more explanation on what snap shackles are and why we use them in carriage driving. So let's go over here to this screen and make it big for you. There we go. Um, so these are pictures of snap shackles. They look like this one's a trace shackle, one's a web shackle for the breaching. Um, and we use this as sort of a safety device. So if you think of it, when we're looking at a regular carriage, a traditional carriage setup, uh, typically we're hooking the traces over some sort of a friction point on the carriage. So it might be a sword end single tree, like you see way over there at the right side of the slide right now, or you might have a pigtail on the top left, or it's another kind of pigtail on the bottom left, where you'd be putting a slot over uh, some sort of a friction bearing. Uh, and those are great, they're fine, they've worked for hundreds of years. The trouble is getting those undone, especially if you have to get it undone in a hurry, can cause a problem. If your horse gets stuck somewhere or something like that, or you're trying to like hurry up and get him unhooked because he's getting kind of wigged out by something that's going on around the corner, uh, well, you know that that can be a really awkward situation. And the same thing is true for when we're buckling in our uh, breaching holdbacks. You know, that's the part that comes off of your horse's breaching and buckles right around the shaft of the carriage. Uh, if you've ever tried to unbuckle a uh, piece of leather strapping that has weight bearing on it, you know that that's a really difficult prospect, right? And if things get a little weird on your carriage driving, maybe you take like a little bit of an unplanned route. <laughs> I'm sorry, Carol, you know, I got these pictures of you and I'm going to use them in just about every presentation. We had a lot of fun that day and we actually came out of this situation okay. Uh, but you know, if you have an issue with your horse, if the horse, um, if you you know end up in the bushes and you can't drive your horses out of the bushes the way we were able to that day at this uh, combined driving event if your carriage gets stuck somewhere or if the worst happens you end up having your horse fall uh, maybe because of bad footing or you have uh, a turnover, you know, for whatever reason you have a turnover. What's gonna happen in the next moment is every bit of your harness is gonna get twisted around and put under tension. And when all of that leather is under tension, you can't really 
unbuckle anything. So getting your horse unhitched while all of that material is under tension is really, really difficult. Uh, and oftentimes it's really just downright impossible to get your horse unhooked. What you end up having to do is go through the harness and look for any buckle that you can unbuckle. And essentially what you end up doing is disassembling the entire harness until finally you've relieved the tension on the uh, traces and you've relieved the tension on the holdbacks. Now, if you're ever in that situation, the first place to go to is unbuckling the turnback and the uh, hip straps. So the turnback is that part of the carriage uh, where your, uh, mm, that's not a very good picture to use. <laughs> I thought I had a really good picture for that. Um, the turn back is that part uh, where you come to the saddle from the crupper and the leather kind of turns back. And that's a really great place to unbuckle uh, the harness from. Now, uh, some people might use like a thumb snap and hopefully that will make it a little easier to to hitch in and unhitch. The problem is that a thumb snap doesn't really work out that great because in order to get that unhitched, you still have to get the trace to kind of back up and away from that thumb snap. The other problem with th thumb snaps is they're really prone to that little snappy bit of the snappity snap snap part actually falling apart. Uh, I mean, tell me if you've had this happen where the little spring inside, this is a different kind of thumb snap, but those little springs in there, they kind of give out. And, you know, all of a sudden you've got an open snap on your harness somewhere and, you know, eh, something comes undone. It's not the biggest deal in the world if something comes undone while you're driving, usually, but it can get dodgy. So the cool thing about snap shackles is that they've got this little bail system that when you release the snap shackle, the, the whole bail moves. So see there at the bottom of the screen where that, that little, uh, the, the whole piece that's holding on to the trace is actually moving out of the way. And so then that trace can get released. And a snap shackle has been designed such that you can actually open that snap shackle while it's bearing quite a heavy load. So it has been specifically designed so that you can get out of a dodgy situation like that. It's going to help you get your horse unhitched more quickly. Um, now, when people are talking about snap shackles, they have a tendency to really focus on keeping that snap shackle closed rather than can the snap shackle be opened quickly and easily. And that's why you want to make sure that you go for a, a good quality snap shackle. Now you can see here in this picture, we see two different types of snap shackles. One's got kind of a web type, uh, a triangle on it. And that works really well for the breaching because your breaching strap uh, doesn't have to get all bent up and you don't have to come up with some extra piece of hardware to integrate the breaching strap with the snap shackle. And then the snap shackle on the right is designed for, you know, a clevis mount, you know, going right off to the hardware of your carriage. Um, now, when we have a problem with snap shackles opening accidentally, which happens, it usually has to do with the fact that the snap shackle wasn't closed properly in the first place. So here's a quick little anatomy lesson on your snap shackles. So we have over here is the bail. That's kind of the thing that keeps that snap shackle closed. Inside the body of the snap shackle, we have this plunger that has a spring wrapped around it. And that plunger goes through a little hole on the bale and that's what actually keeps that snap shackle shut. So if you have that plunger not going all the way in to the bale, 
when you put load on that snap shackle or just even the regular jarring and jostling that snap shackles experience in their life on your carriage, you know, that snap shackle can pop open. Now, as I said a moment ago, having a, a trace undo while you're driving or having a breaching strap undo while you're driving probably isn't going to be that big a deal. More times than not, it's rather inconsequential, especially if you're on relatively flat ground. However, if you were going, you know, up a really steep hill or if you were going um, down a really steep hill and you were to lose your breaching snap, well, you know, there's a chance that that carriage could advance upon your horse and, you know, kind of run into them and that would cause a problem, right? Because, you know, if you hit your horse with your carriage, he's gonna kind of freak out about it. Um, or if you're going up a really steep hill, even, even going up a steep hill, if a trace falls, it's usually not that big a deal because the horse advances, but he hits your hands, like if you have a little bit of contact. If you have really loose reins, yeah, he might pull that whole saddle out of place and that could lead to a problem. Now, one of the other ways that uh, snap shackles end up releasing prematurely is if they haven't been maintained properly. And, you know, when you don't keep that, that little plunger deal nice and clean, sorry, this is very loud. Um, let's make this screen bigger here for a minute. There we go, now you can see my snap shackle. So this little plunger is what's actually holding that snap shackle shut. And if you've got this thing riding around on your carriage for months and years, and you never give that snap shackle a little bit of love and attention, maybe a little WD-40, maybe just a little quick clean of that system, maybe spray it out a little bit, well, that thing's gonna get all crudded up and it may not you know, actually fully engage that plunger right there in the end of the, the bale. And so then that can cause an accidental release. The other thing that happens is uh, if you put your carriage away or you're, especially when you're using a winch to load your carriage in the trailer or something like that, and you've left your snap shackle open, uh, it can actually grab that bale and twist it. And now it's deformed that snap shackle. So uh, you can't actually close the snap shackle at all, right? So we can see here in these pictures that, uh, you know, we've got a, a, a damaged snap shackle from being left open on the carriage probably. And you can kind of see, I highlighted in red the plunger and you can see right through the, the snap shackle into the plunger and you can see it can't actually see. So let me show you what that looks like in real life right there and let's see if I can get my camera to focus on that and there's a little gap Ooh, let me see if I can get my angle right maybe a little difficult you probably just actually see it in the graphic better um, so if if you've got a damaged snap shackle that snap shackle is absolutely not going to work the way it was designed to work. I mean, it's a kind of a, almost a scientific little piece of hardware. Now, if you've ever had a damaged snap shackle, if you've ever trashed a snap shackle, loading your carriage into your, your truck or your trailer, you know, let us know about it down there. I know that when I was looking at the questions about this uh, talk tonight, somebody was asking, hey, I've got a, a snap shackle that, you know, got damaged and I kind of banged it back into shape. Uh, should I still be using that snap shackle? Man, don't. Just consider that snap shackle done and gone. Um, I don't know how it got damaged, uh, but I would not trust that because the 
trouble is, is that Snapshackle will likely not release for you when it's time for it to release. So here's the, the quick story that I'm going to share with you about when I was in a situation where a Snapshackle would not release. Uh, I was driving some horses, some green horses, big Hackney Clydes, cool horses. We were having a lot of fun that day. Uh, but, you know, for some reason, one of the horses thought it'd be a good idea to rub her head on the pole. And, well, she got her bridle caught on the pole. I think she kind of got the curb chain hook caught up on something. And then she started to fight it. Well, guess what happened next? Go ahead. Throw it in the comments section if you can guess what happens next. <laughs> yeah, well, if you guessed that the bridle came off that horse, you guessed 100% right. What happens next? We're off to the races. I've got one bridle on a horse and another horse with a bridle down around her ankles and we're going off a million miles an hour. So I followed all of my own coaching for what to do in a runaway, which uh, by the way, class plug, what to do in a runaway next week. Uh, check out the website for that. Um, and we got the horses stopped. But of course, you know, you've got this horse without the bridle who's still freaked out and she's still trying to get away from that carriage while the horse who had the bridle on, who was like, um, you know what, maybe we should not be doing this, kind of was helping us keep her in place. And uh, one of the horse's owners came, comes over. I'm like, get this horse unhooked as fast as you can. I'm staying on the box so I can keep control in, in case they do get away from us again. And you know, this guy was a big guy, much bigger the guy than I am. And he goes for the snap shackles on the traces and those things would not release because they were under too much weight because they weren't a really good quality snap shackle. They were kind of just a cheap snap shackle that was, you know, a knockoff brand of some description. So what kind of snap shackle do I recommend? Well, if you stick with, you know, any kind of one of the main brands of snap shackles, you're probably going to do really well. You know, most of these, you know, mainstream uh, sailing hardware snap shackles that you can buy uh, from a boating supply store and some of our carriage driving shops, uh, usually those pieces of hardware have been tested, they've been load tested, they have specific brake testing, um, and, and they're really decent quality pieces of hardware. Uh, I like the Wishard ones, I've used Harkin, I've used Ronstan, and I think Schieffer is another brand that I've used, and of course Herm Sprenger we all know about uh, from the bits that we often use. I absolutely love Herm Sprenger's bits. I don't really particularly care for their snap shackles. I feel that they're just um, not as tightly made as the Wishard snap shackles. I think the Wishard snap shackles are just, you know, just a little better finish. But you know, they're they're going to work, and they're probably going to be a quite a reliable uh, snap shackle. So the snap shackles that I use when I'm setting up a carriage for you know the quick release hardware um, are the Wishards. I've been using them for about oh I don't know uh, twenty years. Uh, they don't pay me anything. You know I used to sell Wishard in my store only because I knew that that was a, a product that I could depend on that I had depended on, but yeah I'm not getting paid by Wishard to tell you to buy their snap shackles. Um, if anybody knows anybody over there and they want to suggest that they sponsor some of my videos, hey have at it. Ask them to get in touch with me. Anyway, the models that you're looking for, I put up here on the screen. They're uh, 2476 for that's that's kind of this size snap shackle here, the one that I've got in my hand, um, or the uh, 2474 is just a slightly smaller version of that snap shackle. So if you've got minis, you know, these 2476s, they look just a little bit chunky on, on your carriage and it's just, it's not really that much of a performance difference as it is, it just doesn't scale well with your pony. Uh, for the breaching, you know, I use the uh, 2470, uh, 2374 for the breaching web shackles. Now, 
These shackles are gonna go in the neighborhood of 65 to 95 dollars per shackle. All right. So you're looking at about 250 to 350 dollars, give or take, depending on how well you do your shopping, uh, to set up a carriage. Now the nice thing about it is that if you get a really reliable brand like Wishard, I know that Wishard, for example, they guarantee their snap shackles for life. So if you have a snap shackle that deforms or breaks in regular use, which I have not had um, in the 20 years that I've been using their shackles, uh, they'll, they'll go ahead and replace that snap shackle for you. So that's pretty good. So I feel like that's a really decent insurance policy. Now, of course, there are knockoffs. Anything that can be made can be made cheaper somewhere else, right? So you could get a knockoff snap shackle and you may get knockoff results as I was describing in my little, you know, incident with the one horse of the pair who had a bridle come off. Yeah, we couldn't open that snap shackle and it, you know, could have led to a bigger problem. We eventually got that horse unhooked, unhitched. We got rid of her. We let her run away all on her own with just equipment and, you know, her harness, but not our carriage or the other horse. And, you know, she cooled down, but, you know, if she, you know, if the pair had gotten away with us again, you know, we could have been in some deep doo doo. So if you see snap shackles out there for thirty-five dollars a piece, heck, I, I think I've seen them for thirty-five dollars for the pair. You just got to ask yourself: Is that the kind of insurance policy that you want to be out there driving your horse with? It's not what I would go out and use. So you know, stick with. A brand name stick with a, a care a, you know a manufacturer that's going to stand behind them now as far as weight ratings go i get that question a lot and you know geez andy how much weight rating should a snap shackle have and really the weight ratings on the uh you know brand name snap shackles are phenomenal you know most of these snap shackles uh like i think this snap shackle right here has a working load of somewhere in the neighborhood of four thousand pounds okay so this this piece of hardware is designed to perform normally under four thousand pounds of weight so if you're out there with your ponies you know you got a pair of ponies and you're driving and for some reason god only knows why you end up driving off of a cliff and you 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 just about fall to your death but the only thing that catches you is that snap shackle somehow caught on a piece of fence or something like that and you've got your carriage and yourself and your two ponies and you're just hanging by that snap shackle well that snap shackle is not going to break. And if it does break, it's going to deform before it breaks. It's going to kind of twist and torque. And then it's going to be kind of like a movie scene where, you know, oh my God, we're just about falling off. And well, all right, my imagination is getting a little carried away with me there. All right, so where are you going to buy those snap shackles? Well, <clears throat> You can do a Google search on the snap shackles that I just mentioned in the uh, previous slides uh, and you would be looking for a boating supply or a marine supply company and you can find things uh, Mori Sailing or West Marine or one of those things but you can, these guys are also available through some of our carriage uh, dealers and you're probably going to pay about the same price, maybe a couple more bucks to our carriage people because, you know, they're much smaller businesses, so they're not able to give us quite as big a discount. But then you're kind of keeping our uh, sport alive, aren't you, by going to one of our carriage driving retailers. So, you know, I am no longer in the retail business uh, and I don't get anything out of these particular retailers. I just pulled these three off because they were the quickest ones that I were a was able to find snap shackles at. Now, I know that uh, Carriage Driving Essentials has both the Wishard snap shackles and the Springer sh snap shackles and maybe one or two more. Uh, driving Essentials, which is a different company. One's in California, Carriage Driving 
essentials is California, driving essentials is Pennsylvania. Uh, they have the uh, Springer Snap Shackles as well as Iowa Valley Carriage have the uh, Springer snap shackles. Once again, I don't get anything out of, uh, you know, giving you those recommendations. They're just places where I know that we can um, go for some of our carriage driving hardware. Uh, so if you do go to them, you know, let them know that I, I sent you along their way. I, I, I don't know, just so that we all know that we're all supporting each other as local businesses. Um, Last little thought that I have on carriage, you know, uh, snap shackles is uh, typically we're not going to use those snap shackles on um, a wooden carriage. Let let me find a uh, nice wooden carriage photo here and see if I can get my screen to cooperate. So. <clears throat> If you have a really nice painted wooden carriage like that uh, road cart on the right, a lot of times you're not going to use a snap shackle on the trace there because that all that extra hardware is going to beat the crap out of your carriage, right? So you probably, unless you put, you know, come up with a little bit of a trace extension so you can get that snap shackle away from the carriage. Um, one other cool little strategy that you could use would be to cover the snap shackle um, with just a little piece of lamb's wool or something like that, but something that you can move out of the way quickly. I do, however, in the wooden carriages, use the snap shackles when I am, uh, uh, you know, doing the breaching because, well, it doesn't beat up the carriage and the breaching is a pretty critical thing if I had to be partially hooked to a carriage either with just the breaching or just the traces. I'd want to be able to get the breaching off first because it's, you know, that's a less critical piece. And so, and that's the one that has a, you know, a buckle on it. So it's a little bit harder to undo if things get weird with your carriage. So, um, one last thing that I almost forgot to mention and <clears throat> Here's something that drives me absolutely bananas. So I see people hooking up their carriages, especially at combined driving events, and they get that trace snapped into the snap shackle, and then they do something that just makes me absolutely crazy. They take some electrical tape and they wrap the snap shackle once or twice. Oh, they're like, yeah, buddy, Andy, I put a pull tab on it. So when I broke that tape, look, look, there's a little pull tab so I can get to that. The, I can get the tape off really easily. This, uh, this is just bananas. This is cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, man. This is a piece of safety hardware that you just disabled. This would be like the equivalent of me putting on the seatbelt in my car, but saying, yeah, you know what though, if, if I need to get out of my car in an emergency, I don't want to be like restricted by this safety belt. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the safety belt and I'm just going to tuck it under my bum. So it's still across my chest, but you know, I can get out of my car quickly. It's no longer a safety belt at that point. If you've disabled the quick release mechanism of your snap shackle, well, it's no longer a quick release snap shackle, is it? And if you have a problem with your snap shackle popping open all the time, and that's why you're putting the tape on, you probably have a really cheap snap shackle, a damaged snap shackle, a dirty snap shackle, or perhaps all of the above. At that point, you might as well just use a piece of quick link carabiner style hardware like this, because it's not gonna take you uh, less time to unhitch from this than it is from this. So stop doing this, people. <laughs> You're driving me crazy. That's not safe. Don't do that. Okay, so let's see. What can I um, also add to this? I wanted to, you know, take a look into the window to see if I can see your comments, which hmm, it seems like. There's Rosie. Does it matter which side of the snap is towards the outside um, of the horse or which side? Which... I understand. Rosie's asking when we're actually hooked up to the horse, which way should the snap shackle face? So let me 
find the right picture that should show us. Uh, give me, bear with me for one moment, see if I can find that. Okay, here we go. We will press play over here and show you my screen. Okay, so if we look over in this bottom right hand corner, and actually I think that there's another way that I can do this that I can make that even bigger in your screen. Ah, technology is awesome. Okay, so if we take a look at that snap shackle right there, you see that I've got the little pull. I don't have my little red pull tab in that picture, but I usually have a little red pull tab, just a nice little nylon leash like that right there um, to make them easy to pull on. I always face that away from the horse and then also uh, way back, maybe uh, not quite as good a picture back here. Let's see, do I, do I have that in this scenario here? I've got the um, snap shackle faced out so that it's easy for me to get to. That, that's all that comes down to is ease of access. There's no proper or improper way to do it. You just want it to be something that, you know, really operates quite easily. I see that Heather's here and she says she's uh, learning so much and I'm really great to see that. Thanks for coming along, Heather. And um, I am just would love to be able to see all of the comments. So I'll tell you what, if you have more questions, by all means, drop them into the comment box below. Let us know, let other people know. Do you use snap shackles on your carriage? Do you not use snap shackles? Are you thinking about using snap shackles on your carriage? And what are your questions about using snap shackles? Uh, I'm trying to do these on, live online sessions every week. I would love to know what you would like to see me cover in these live little 30 minute online sessions. If you missed a previous live session, by all means, go over to my website, coachmansdelight.com. I'm making an effort to make sure that I post all of those over there or also on my YouTube channel. Uh, so if you just search for Coachman's Delight on YouTube, uh, go ahead and subscribe. If you're watching this on YouTube right now, you know, go go down there and hit the subscribe button. Uh, I need all the subscribers I can get. Come on, let's get together as a group here. All right, that's it for now. I hope that this has been really helpful and informative. If you felt like it was, by all means, hit that like button and share this with your friends and with your driving clubs. Uh, next week we have a class that's all about uh, runaways. Oh God, who wants to talk about runaways? Well, it turns out a lot of people do. So I'm gonna give you some coaching, what I do in a runaway and um, how I handle it and how I handled that pair of horses, uh, got that runaway to stop. So I hope you'll join me for that class. If you know somebody who could really use that class, uh, please you know, send them along to coachmansdelight.com and the quick way to get to that class, backslash online class really easy and you can see what other classes I have coming up and you can see what other classes are available to view online. All right guys, thanks for sticking with me tonight. Uh, I'll catch you next week sometime real soon. Be safe out there, have a great drive. Take care.